Have you grabbed a special edition autographed One Idea Sex poster yet? These are only available for a limited time, and once they're gone, they'll never be available again. So grab yours now with the link below. In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are continuing work on the best vehicle ever made. No, we're not the second best. There's no Volkswagen up here, is there, Martin? Oh my God. On a is dirty there? Nissan, let's get to work on the dirty Nissan. Welcome to another episode of Dirty Nissan Mods. Uh, my friend, this car's loves, awesome. I'm sorry to things. cut you off. This is so good. It is the things. second best car ever made. Yep. Volkswagen up, 180SX, it's all you need. So good. You, I'm not taking the poo out of the pants, man. Back in the day, you, I'm had not. S30, you either had an S13 or a WRX and you just thought it was the sickest thing ever and it usually pinged its head off because you had a crappy boost controller on it and then the engine blew up and you go, oh my God, then you sold it cheap. Uh, but we've ended up one, with one that's actually not that bad. But we are going to do some tasty, tasteful mods, and I'm thoroughly enjoying working on this. You know why? Because it's not as dirty as your normal dirty Nissan, is it? I it's just clean, worked something man. out, Martin. When you said that, what? I have just had a cataclysmic brain wormhole between the relationships of the WRXs back in the day and the 180s at the day. Because you know, everybody was racing and everyone was rivalry yeah. and everyone was whatever. What was actually going on behind the scenes, I know you'll agree with me with this. Okay. The guys in the WRXs were selling the drugs to the bong heads in the Nissans. They were. <laughs> the, the, the dudes back in the day driving WRXs were drug dealers. I can't even And argue. the people keeping them in business were the dudes in 180s. It's true, isn't it? Well, yeah. Isn't it? I guess so. Except for us. Except I was in us. my 180 and you were in your Subaru, but we weren't involved in that. I didn't own a WRX. I never inhaled. <laughs> Um, anyway, so this thing is really nice. Blacktop uh, SR20. Everything's, it's pretty good. Um, but we are going to do some tasty sweet upgrades, like a new turbo, which I'm just frothing over. But we have some other stuff that's going in it, too. It's over there. Uh, a whole box of stuff arrived, which I'm about to do a little finger boxing on, which is going to be great. Uh, we've got a radiator. That's we've got unboxing coilovers. There's a, a box that. came from, like, a, this box here came from, is this Romania or America or America? Look at this. Look how big it is. Don't look yet. Not yet. Calm yourself down. Don't even think about it, people. Because there is so much stuff to do today that you could listen to two idiots talking shit or you could listen to two idiots talking shit while we actually work on this car. What That's would you right. prefer? That's the question. That's right. I know what I'd prefer. I'd prefer to take out all the stuff that we're going to modify and put in shiny new mad stuff that's going to be reliable, sweet, tasty, tuned up perfectly. No pinging around here, people. No. I mean, there was lots of pinging going on back in the day. Not no. just the cars, the owners as well. <laughs> that's what the Rexy owners were doing, dude. The Rexy owners were in the city. Their cars and themselves were pinging off their heads. Yes, they were, Martin. With it's, some it's absolutely true. Boost now, controller bickies. All, all of this... <laughs> Which is funny because they will all be munching on Volkswagens. Volkswagens. Some people will get what I'm talking about. Munching on Volkswagens. Yes. Okay, I'm and just going to... And then pinging. No one took Volkswagen seriously back then though because that's like Mark IV GTI territory. <laughs> <laughs> Our one in Germany was pretty cool. Click on the thing and you Except watch it the... didn't boost at all. Anyway, all of this garbage is going... In the bin. And the good stuff that we've got... Is uh is um is going in. So let me show you what's going in today. Let's do a giant uh, and then we're unboxing. Kick right a giant into it. Finger unboxing. A what? So we've been doing lots of ordering online, and a massive box has arrived with a bunch of random stuff. So we've got a uh, it's a waterline kit. We've got some uh, dampers for the bonnet, like different struts. So you get rid of that, which kind of makes it cooler. That one there, I'll show you that in a minute. That I'm very very excited about. Um, boot kit because they're rooted. Oil filter, we did already get some of these with the car, but they are there. That's a fuel filter. That one is some, it's in there. Ah, NGK Iridium spark plugs, which is cool. Uh, and then we have, for the proper old school, we've got a Blitz front mount intercooler kit. What's in that? Oh, that's, I think, um, oh, rocket cover gasket, Martin. That's good. In here we have, a little look. All of this will be going on. I gather this is probably parts for the front mount in the caller kit, which is, yep, hoses, clamps, stuff like that. And then in here, ah, turbo gasket. I think some of them are going to be coming with the turbo anyway. And then, here we go, the actual core for the front mount. Look at that. 
You know that's just going to be, you know it's going to be. Ah! Adjust your pants, everyone. So that's that. Now, Martin's going to show you some chisel, and then I'm going to show you the turbo. I also have some amazing modifications to unbox, which I'm going to show you, and then we're going to smash them into the vehicle. The first is a set of Shockworks coilovers, which are made specifically for this 180SX. We're also able to specify, oh cool, shirts. We're also able to specify um, what damping rate we want it on the springs as well to kind of keep it nice and streetable, which is important I think, because you put really, really stiff coilovers in a street car, you ruin it and then you never want to drive it. We want the opposite effect with this. So there is some very sweet looking Shockwork coilovers. Now a lot of the people that make this kind of stuff, Shockworks are a good example. Um, you just talk to them first and you say, "What? this is what I want to do with the car, this is how I'm going to use it and then they can sort of give you some advice on what weight spring and the valving for inside the shock itself. So that's mad. So we've got a full set of coilovers to suit our four stud vehicle. Um, the other handling mods we have as well is a bunch of white line gear, which is pretty cool. This is a sway bar kit specifically for the 180 also. So we've got heavy duty sway bar links and front and rear sway bars, which I'll show you because they're freaking awesome. These are also adjustable, so you can fine tune your suspension by fine tuning how stiff the sway bar is or where you mount it, which sort of changes the way that it behaves, um, which is excellent. So we have our handling mods, which is our coilovers and our sway bars, like that. Get around the diff and get around the exhaust, etc. which is pretty awesome. So throw them on, replaces the factory ones. And then, excitingly, also coils I spoke about last time. This is what's really cool though. This is a, uh, a coil fitting kit. So this helps adapt the Volkswagen style NGK coils to our Nissan. Now you can get ones for various Nissan vehicles, S13, S14, S15, and the only thing that changes is the plug on the end. So what's cool about that is that now plugs directly in, which means you don't have to make your own loom. And then this end plugs into your car. Now because we are gonna be adding a aftermarket ECU in the form of a Haltech Elite, uh, we'll change this plug because we've got to run wires up from the ECU up to here so we can do uh, sequential ignition injection, all that sort of stuff, um, which is pretty mad. So that's a loom we got from Vag Parts, and this is the last and the exciting part as well, is our Haltech Elite and associated bits. We've also got a plug-in adapter so we can plug directly into the factory loom. The loom's in good condition, so why wouldn't you? Boost control solenoid as well, which we spoke about last time. And then we've got our Haltech Elite 1000, I believe this is, no, 1500, cool. There's a Haltech Elite 1500, which you could convert that to e-throttle if you wanted to, but we're not going to today. And we also have our wideband, which means the car's constantly sniffing its exhaust to making sure everything's working and there's no pingers going on like that. So that's all the stuff we're going to throw in. It looks like a lot, but this is all like relatively easy and bolt-in, which is very, very, very cool. We also have a clutch in case the car ends up needing that, which it probably will. And we've got a new radiator over here so that is going in just to uh make sure the car actually runs at the correct temperatures because it's still other than one or two laps it's done at the track where it just blew blue smoke everywhere we're not really sure what uh, state everything is in and then we have over here our turbo which i'm not even going to unbox until it's ready to actually put that on because i'm just i'm trying to delay the gratification and excitement just a little bit because there is so much mad stuff to go on the car. So what has changed a little bit between now and like 20 years ago and you modelled on the same mods is just a replacement radiator probably would have been over two grand for something that's like custom made. Now this stuff's been around for so long, there's been so much R&D, so much development, processes have gotten cheaper, you can get mods and do all this stuff with awesome new gear for a lot cheaper than it used to be. Absolutely, and so when I had my 180SX back in the, I guess, early 2000s, a front mount kit installed on your car was around two and a half thousand dollars. Absolute madness. Now you can buy a front mount, like a really good quality one for five, six hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks. Anyway, let's jump in. Let's run the music. Let's do this. Modifying cars doesn't always mean more power, even though it usually kind of does. It also means making the car run better and more reliably. And one often overlooked issue here is cooling. It is hot in Australia for most of the year. Winter usually only requires some woolen undies and a hot water bottle to get through and it barely gets into the single digits. So we have some mad new parts to go in to help with cooling, but first we need to clean up the dirty mess this Nissan has ejected out all over itself. So if you need to measure some stuff up, uh, make sure you check out the all new black Mighty Car Mods tape measure. While many parts of the car will remain pure, there is one piece that's about to get chopped, and that's the battery tray to make way for the cold side piping of the new front-mounted intercooler. 
There are some measurements available in Japanese and using a translator helps us get a basic idea of what to do. Once the hole's been chopped, I'll be keeping the spirit of Nissan alive by painting the exposed edges with 240Z white, left over from our Fair Lady RV project. With the radiator out and everything else out of the way, this is the best possible time to do some belts and our previous owner has very kindly supplied us with the belts. So I'm gonna rip off these old ones. They look not great and uh, replace them. This 180 has some serious oil leaks. It appears to not just be engine oil, but power steering fluid as well. And the aircon looks pretty sad. I'm gonna clean up the pulleys and replace the shagged belts and then clean everything down so I can try and identify exactly where these leaks are coming from. It wasn't easy. Meanwhile, I'm getting our new front mounted intercooler installed. While we're up the front of the car, we're installing our new black alloy radiator. These are affordable, offer better cooling, and don't have 30-year-old plastic end tanks that can blow off while you're waiting for your drive-through slot. For any purity police, now would be a good time to look away from the screen. I need to make some minor adjustments with an angle grinder. Yes, angle grinder and minor are not words that are usually associated with each other, but in this case, some trimming is required to fit in around the new intercooler. A fuel pump upgrade is one of the first mods you should consider when going for more power. A consistent fuel supply means less chance of detonation and stable mixtures. Good quality aftermarket pumps are cheap these days, but beware of going too big and trying to flow more fuel than the rest of the system can accommodate. That usually causes more problems than it fixes. Now because Nissan love car enthusiasts, they made it really easy to change the fuel pump in a 180SX. You pop the boot lid, you pull out the plate at the bottom of the boot and you yank it out. This is the original fuel pump, looks very similar to the MR2 one of a similar era that I pulled out once and similar to the Super Turbo one, funnily enough. Uh, that's the cradle that it goes into. Now we're going to put a new fuel pump in. It is possible to over pump your car. Um, you base it on the power figure that you're chasing. We know we're going for 180 to 200 kilowatts. We don't need a huge pump. That's a Raceworks um, AI. 85 compatible pump as well. We're going to put that in. So a little bit of adaption happens. It comes with a bunch of fittings and rubbers and stuff to try and help make it work because this works with a multitude of different fuel hangers. We're going to pop that in and we'll have all the fuel supply that we need. There's often a variety of housings and brackets that you can install your pump onto. If you can get a specific dropping kit for your car with everything done, that will make things easier. If you're customising it, make sure the pickup point and filter sock are in the same position as the original. Then make sure it's firmly secured and always use new hose that's submersible if it's inside the tank. So the front mount intercooler is in, the piping is in, the radiator is in. We have a massive list of things to do, of which only three things have been written off. How it's are you going, exactly Martin? Exactly right. Fuel pumps in as well, which is a big one because we didn't need all that. And this all had to happen first. So there's a few things still to happen with turbos and ECUs and other fun things. We actually don't have our injectors yet, so we're waiting for some new injectors and then we'll be able to slap that in as well. And we're actually, believe it or not, not that far from just turning the key. I know, it doesn't look like it, but it is a pleasure to work on this nugget, isn't it? If you've got an old nugget like this, guess what? It's worth more than $33 now. I bought this for $9,000, but its value has gone through the roof. Massively. Now, Shannon's is a sponsor of our show and all of our cars are insured with them. And when this is on the road, registered and rolling around, it is also going to be 
insured with Shannon's, um, they do a great value. So if you, like me, have bought a car for $3.50 and now because of the crazy second-hand prices that are going around, it's gone up, um, give Shannon's a call and um, and adjust your adjust your um, value. You end up speaking to someone who knows about cars. So if you go, oh, I've got a 180, they'll know straight away why you're calling, and it won't be because you blew it up. Yeah. It'll be because the value has gone up, and it's worth updating every single year. Injectors need to arrive before we can change them. Fuel pressure regulator as well. Then we slap our turbo on, our how taken, we plumb everything, we plug it in, we fill it full of coolant, we change all the fluids. Yep. Yes. And our exhaust actually looks pretty good. Really good. Um, I'm just trying to work out whether to go full me 20 years ago Canon or the twin tip. I just, I don't know. Nothing what do you wrong think? With, nothing what do you wrong think, with twin people? tip, man. Twin tip's the There's go. There's nothing wrong with the big Canon either, Martin. That's true. Um, even though, you know, you, you, if, 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 you, if it's too loud, you're too old, man. <laughs> That's it? definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's, um, let's kick on. I just want to let everyone know, because I think it's important, that this 180 is bloody excellent. It's so good. It's so good, man. I mean, except for the enormous, gigantic hit it's had on the front that probably bent one chassis rail into the other. It hasn't been hit it's at all. It's been stacked so bad. No, it hasn't. But it's a nice car that's been stacked. It hasn't it's been, been looked hit. after. All the parts are really nice. It. Nothing's rusty and munted. It's just really good, man. It's you about should be to very be happy. even better. It's been now, if you didn't so know already, bad. what is the plan for this car? A 180SX with 180 <laughs> kilowatts at the wheels, <laughs> which is about <laughs> 80 more well, than it probably Drifter. is meant to come with. Um, today, it's getting a new turbo. Now, we don't need a massive turbo because we're only aiming for 180 kilowatts at the wheels, which is not a huge amount of power, but it's actually going to be a really good amount of power for this to be a fun street car and get me back to my youth people. So we are replacing the Shag factory turbo with a T28 ball bearing turbo. This is from a JDM S15. Random fact, I ordered this um, from High Spool and the guy rang me and said, do you know who I am? And I said, no, but I hope you're gonna send me a turbo. And he said, I was the one that helped you rebuild the turbo for your Miss Daisy project, which was our SDI engine in the back of the Beetle that you can see up there. Small world. Now, here it is. This is exciting. Now, if you're gonna replace something, Marty's and my philosophy is always try and replace it with something better. If you're gonna to go to all the effort of taking it out and redoing it, you may as well. So I could have got something the same that was, as what was in there or tried to rebuild it, but if you can go better, go better. Now, Martin, do you wanna bring that one over and we'll have a look? The biggest difference I can see so far, look how much bigger the wastegate actuator is compared to that one. And importantly, the front housing. Massive difference. So sort of much size bigger. difference. But it uses the same flange. So they say T28 because this flange here is the same, which means you can use it on our stock manifold, which is a low mount setup. So your other option is that it flips the other way and you have it sitting up nice and high and proud. But this can retains the, uh, the stock positioning, which also means we can use these lines. So someone's put aftermarket lines on the turbo for coolant and oil. Yep. We'll be able to reuse all that. Now, I know some people, you know, want to make a million horsepowers for their YouTubing and their views and all that other stuff, but ultimately that stuff can often lead to a sacrifice in the actual enjoyment and drivability of the car. We've experienced it by making cars that have too much power or kind of seem cool it's on the thing. internet, but they're not that cool, uh, like our Mark III Golf, which is one of our most viewed videos ever. That thing was a piglet it's to drive. Uh, and just, you know, and the police would pull you over every time you went out. Cool for what it was, but this here is meant to be a nice car that you can drive regularly that makes good yep. power and is fun enough to do a bunch of different stuff. Full bearing has a reputation for spooling up a bit quicker and we're just going sort of like a little bit bigger but not heaps because if you put a massive turbo on a Sylvia or an SR with an SR20 in it, you get a dyno curve that just goes Wah! right at the end and makes heaps of power but otherwise sucks to drive on the road. So this yep. is all about mid-range and just being able to punch the throttle, it responds and it goes. And while there are sometimes recipes of what turbos work in different configurations, we know that this one here is going to work because this is a factory delivered turbo on an SR20 for a more recent model S15 so we know it's going to work. So Sick. today we're getting the turbo going, uh, we're also getting our coilovers, we want to get the car rolling again yeah. uh, so that's happening. Some brakes maybe. Um, and some brakes. I also bought uh, yes. some seats off Facebook Marketplace. Now, I'll show you these in a little while. All you need to know is, just to remind you, the car cost $9,000 and so did the seats. <laughs> Not quite, but... I mean, I mean, almost. I mean, it's, it's, it's when the seats cost almost as much as the car, you know we're in crazy times when it comes to second-hand goods, people. Absolutely. Crazy times. So, goals so far are get the turbo on, get the coilovers on. You've probably seen by now that we've opened a new workshop called Super Garage. Um, so why aren't we using the hoist? Because we set that project and that place up so other projects could happen in there. Because there's a and, broken um, RX-7 on the hoist. There's an RX-7 in there, there's two other cars in there and we've got some friends in there that are doing that project. Because workshops are like utes, everyone wants to use them. So 
Uh, we put a lot of time and money into setting up that space, and today we will be on our backs again in here, <laughs> as we have It'll been be for fine. the last seven years. It'll be fine. All right, let's get to it. This factory turbo has been spinning away furiously for almost three decades, and I'm stoked to be replacing it with something brand new that's capable of making even more power. But everything is rusty and rounded off, and that means everything takes longer than it should. So this particular nut here on the manifold is already rounded over. Most of them look like they're fairly thrashed. I actually can't get that one off. I'm gonna use some of the WD-40 Specialist Penetrant. Fast release and just let that soak in and just give it a little bit more and then focus on another one. I don't want to leave that one to last because as Marty says, if you leave the hardest one to last, it'll be even harder. So there is one more to get to, which is under the line. So I'm just going to leave that to soak in for a little bit, take this off and then we'll get back to that. And then hopefully I can separate them without using an angle grinder. When we pulled this apart, I noticed that all the breathing stuff was a little bit smashed, like the hoses were unhappy and um, just cracked and not great. So what we've done is we're going to use a different solution for this catch can. Um, this is like a factory catch canister thing, um, which is cool, but it's kind of in the way of the exhaust manifold. It's a bit messy and there's heaps of cool aftermarket options out there like this one, which is from GK Tech, which is an Aussie company. And they've made this awesome catch can that actually sits in the spot where your intercooler pipe used to go. So once you've got a front mount, you can then put this tank in, which sits there, which looks super neat. And it's a really quick and easy run of hoses straight from the outlet here into the tank and then back out again. Um, so that's a mad solution. Looks cool, black, matches, just a bit neater. The car is really starting to come together in that mad OEM Plus look that I'm going for. We've done so much already, but there is still so much to do. All right, that catch can is installed. We'll do the hoses once the turbo's in there. Um, we also just found out that our side feed injectors are actually back ordered and we can't get them for months. So instead we're gonna do a top feed, top feed rail conversion. That's on its way now from interstate and we'll be able to slap some injectors in. With the catch can installed, I'm removing anything from the factory turbo that needs to be transplanted over to the new unit. So I've attached the manifold to the turbo, everything looks like it's been set up properly and now um, we can... Boost is calling. What's that saying, Martin? It shows you. It's time to begin your journey. Great. Let's... You alright? Yep. I mean, I'm working on a Nissan, so as alright as you can be. Yes, we're at that most exciting part of the build where we're installing the turbocharger. That magical, mystical, mysterious and magnificent device that makes everything marvellous. Except it doesn't fit. So the turbo that was already on the car came with this kind of aftermarket hose kit. I've reinstalled that in the exact same configuration that it was on the factory turbo, but it just seems to be fouling here on the stem of the wastegate actuator. So um, I'm just going to take that off and see if we can kind of manoeuvre it in a way that's going to make it fit better in the car. All right, take two. Reconfigured some of these lines and now let's... Uh... See how we go getting it into place. It is pretty common for the factory oil and water lines to fail after lots of thrashing or lots of turbo swaps. It's worth remembering most of this stuff was only ever warranted for three years and we're now 10 times that and it's still going strong. These aftermarket replacements are durable but have their own issues of rubbing through things they shouldn't. With so many different bits to attach to our spoolie boy, we're going to leave it all loose, make sure the threads are engaged properly and then tighten it down till it's happy and check it all with a torque wrench. Brake caliper upgrade options are limited when you stay with the four stud hubs, so we're going to stick with the factory brakes for now. I'm going to clean up all the old gunk, check the seals and repaint them for an extra 25 kilowatts. We'll install brand new upgraded discs and pads as well as new brake lines, which should give good pedal feel and good stopping power for our desired power level.
Okay, people, so it always takes a little bit longer to get things done than you think it's going to get done, particularly when things don't always work in their initial configuration. And they almost never work in their initial configuration when a car's this old. Bolt on! <laughs> um, but the turbo is now mounted, manifold is done, so that part of it is done, except for the drain of the turbo, which is not right. So we Seems need to, get to be a different part. size. I don't know if they changed it. I'm not aware if they did. But if we need to get a different part, it's just the bit that bolts onto the bottom of the turbo and yeah. turns from a two bolt into a hose to go back into the sump. Yeah. Now we also ordered some more brakes and stuff so we haven't ended up getting the coilovers done today because we're just going to have to take them out again anyway because there's still a bit of stuff that has yeah. to be done up here so basically we want to do that and the brakes and wheels and tyres all in one go. And the calipers have been fully stripped um, and blown apart, cleaned up. They're in really good condition which is awesome, don't need a full rebuild. All the boots look really good, just going to clean it, paint them up so they look cool. And then, uh, yeah, use that with our new rotors, which will get the sort of best we can get with the factory brakes because we're staying four stud. It limits you to what brakes you can do. So these are fine, especially if you upgrade your rotors and pads and yeah. make sure your calipers are good. We'll put some braided lines on it. So it's going to be good. Back in the day, people did do five stud conversions. It was a really common modification people did. I didn't do that um, for my massive 16, uh, 16 inch wheels, but um, the parts were just not available. We did explore that option, but it makes finding wheels uh, really tricky. So at least just to get things moving around for now um, we might end up with these painted or I might just have to buy some cheap wheels off the net uh, until we get something from Japan I'm not sure yet but we will get something just to put on there it may not be the classiest most fancy wheel or the best option but it'll just be enough for us to roll the car around because at some point we've got to do a clutch as well there's just yep. there's lots of things to we've do we've also got injectors on the way too so yeah a few deliveries still to come but all fun stuff to put on yep anyway so there it is of course if you want to support the show you can get some uh mighty car mods merch from the mighty car mods website and if you haven't seen yet uh, we have a brand new garage, Super Garage, uh, which we've just launched. You can check out the videos for that, and that has its own range of mad merch as well. You can check that out at supergarage.com.au, which we should be in right now. Well, the 180 might visit it, so we might chuck a clutch in it on the hoist. That might be a fun thing to yeah. do. Anyway, Brad. see you next time on more 180SX Adventures. I feel like a schnitzel roll. I'm getting one, and I a don't care roll. if you don't want one, because I want one.